Hi, and welcome to Code Corner. This is a video series we do at Mayfield Renewables where we talk about codes and standards as they relate to the solar and solar plus storage industries. Today, we're gonna to focus in on the 2023 National Electrical Code, specifically 705.13. And so this is energy management systems in the 23 code. In the 2020 code, it was labeled power control systems PCS. So we have a change there from 20 to 23, but we'll get into some of the language and how it points uh, over for you. So I'm going to jump into it. I'm going to show you some code language. One of the things I recommend when you are looking at this, because you are going to see the actual code language, just hit pause on the on the video. Take a second to read through that. I try not to read you the code verbatim, so a lot of times it's helpful just for you to take a look at that yourself and kind of digest it, and then we'll, we'll jump in and, and apply it. So with that, here is that language. So 705.13, you can see that in the 23 code, it was changed from PCS to EMS, energy management system. And another thing that you're gonna notice is that it gets pushed, you get pushed as a user into 750, specifically 750.30. 750 but 750 is a codes, um, code article that's been in play, it's been part of code for a while, and it deals with energy management systems. The thing that's unique about our energy management systems is it's not going to be just managing the loads. So this is going to be a, a way using systems to control both the power, so our generation sources, and the loads. And so that's what it's talking about there in that sentence, talking about we can install an EMS that is permitted to limit current and loading on the bus bars. So we have this ability to, to limit both. And this is going to give us the ability to control loads and sources and make sure that our bus bars aren't overloaded at any point. So this is a pretty big, I would say, step. And this is something the industry is really moving towards and something that we're going to be seeing and embracing quite honestly because of the technology that we're seeing implemented and what we are going to have access for us. What you also see in that informational note is uh, talking about how a power control system is a type of EMS. So here again, we're differentiating a little bit of PCS and EMS, but what we're going to see in, the, in our systems is this ability for that power and load control. There is that note in there also about 1741 as part of the language around the listing. One of the things I'll point you to, it's not in the language yet, it will be showing up in our next cycle of code, but we have a new UL standard that's being developed right now. It's called UL 3141 around energy management systems. And so that actually is gonna get referenced a lot in the 26 code. And this will be the standard for uh, listing our power control systems or our energy management systems are these these combined systems and being able to list those and be able to utilize those in these exact applications. So be looking for that. Uh, we talk about 3141 a fair amount internally. And so, you know, we're developing content around that um, as we speak. And so definitely gonna be something that we're gonna be looking at more and more in the future. All right, so as this code section, well, as 750 gets applied, so 705, 705.13 pushes us into 750.30, and you see 750.30C language here. And so, again, I encourage you to, to pause and, and read that language uh, to help kind of read through what it is. 750.30 also A and B would apply. I'm not showing you that language. A is about load shedding controls and B is about disconnection of power. So it's all about what loads we can and can't sh you know, load shed or even disconnect from power. So there's some, some language around that. So it definitely would apply. But what I wanna focus on here is this capacity of branch circuit feeder or service. So if we are using an energy management system, we can actually use the value that we calculate for the connection load per 220.70, and we'll look at 220.70 uh, in a second here. And then, or, or we can use the maximum source current permitted by the EMS control. 
So what this is telling us is that we are going to size our branch circuits, our feeders, our services based on what we're controlling, how much load we're actually going to have on this. And so that's maybe a little different. Uh, and so this is where it gets pushed into 220.70, which is uh, feeder, or excuse me, load calculations. And so you can see there uh, more language from directly from 220. But what this is allowing us to do is if we have the ability to control our loads, if we have this UL listed management system, then we can actually potentially size our services smaller, not not smaller, but we would size it based on the actual load. So if we have a number of you know big electrical loads, we have heat pumps, car chargers, hot tubs, whatever it happens to be, we have a lot of large electrical loads, but we have the ability to control those. So what code is saying is you can size your service, you can size your branch circuits, your feeders, based on that actual load that because you are controlling it you're not going to let everything just go all at the same time you would have that control so this is a a nice thing to have in the code where we can uh, use it to size our connectors or size our services as well uh, based on the actual loads that we're going to run so looking at this in just in kind of in a graphical form just you know how would this play one of the things this is a way where we would be using load potentially load and power control um, but we have a complete system and so in the image that we have here we have a number of uh, power production sources we're showing them as pv inverters and energy storage inverters so we have power production sources that are generic within the code under 705 and we're going to take those we're going to combine all those together and interconnect those into a main service panel. So under our traditional, what I would call our traditional rules, you can see here we have a 200 amp main service panel. We have a number of inverters that are getting aggregated together and being put on the, on the load side of that main breaker. And so you would look at that and probably, rightfully so, that's potentially overloading that bus bar. We have 200 amps from the utility, we have 100 amps from our different sources. That can't be um, under seven, our traditional 705.12 rules. This wouldn't fly. Under 705.13, what we're doing is we're actually looking at those loads. And so in this case, it would potentially be just a power control system. And so we would just be looking at the power that's being produced. We're looking at the power that's being consumed by the utility, and we're making sure that the sum of those two do not overload the bus bar. And so it's a dynamic thing. It would be able to, that controller that we're showing is gonna have to be able to communicate with the inverters. It would have to be able to, in real time, be throttling those back or letting more power come through. So this is kind of a, you know, where we're getting to, especially with that 3141 listing and with our uh, our power control systems that we have coming up. So this is one, one way that we could be applying this. Another is um, doing more of both the load and that power control. So in that previous one, it was really looking at the power source and the what the loads were consuming and just dynamically changing based on that. In a situation like this, where we have more of a smart panel or we have a different type of um, energy management system, we could actually be um, you know, turning off loads, making sure that the loads themselves being, you know, reading the current that's being drawn by different loads, maybe it's a time of day, you are telling your water heater you don't want it to turn on while you're at work or something like that. EV charger, same thing, you know you're not home, so you can dynamically be controlling the loads and allowing your um, sources to be producing the maximum amount of power or you know interacting in a way that you know whatever is best for that application so this is looking a little bit more into the future as well into you know that 3141 application but this is you know putting energy management systems into play all right so that's covering 705.13 and talking you know about the energy management systems you know, we do have a number of courses on our website. I encourage you to take a look at those, cover a range of different topics as, you know, it might relate to what we were talking about today, solar plus storage. We have some uh, courses that are directly related to that. So I encourage you to take a look at those and see if there might be something that we can help you out with. 
And as always, I'm, I love to get questions, love to hear from folks on this or other topics. You have ideas for other future Code Corners, you know, feel free to send them our way. Or if you have questions on this topic specifically, you can reach out to us at these locations and would love to hear from you. And hopefully we'll see you next time.